Boys. Zero here. Welcome back to the Pokemon Pure Green Green Team Run. Last time we acquired our third Pokemon and made our way through Mount Moon. I decided that since I have a similar loophole for my monotypes, Execute is usable as long as I vault for the Hall of Fame, and I fully intend to do so at the first opportunity. In fact, unlike in the vanilla games, there is no real reason not to evolve your Pokemon at the soonest opportunity, because unlike vanilla, Stone and train the Pokemon that evolved with stones or trade evolutions actually learn more moves um, after they evolve. Except for stuff like Eevee, where they learn moves that they weren't in their evolved form. That's basically the only exception, but even then, none of them are especially useful. Of course, now that we're here in Cerulean City, as you'd imagine, we're starting mostly with Grass type, so why not start with the gym? Okay, come on, just go down. Ouch. Ow! That sucks. But yeah, Execute isn't green now, but it will be, so it counts. We're gonna take out this other trainer. Ex not to mention, Execute has, well, it has a much better defensive type than, uh, Bulbasaur does. Or Ivasaur, rather. Okay. So, let's go back over here. And, uh, we're gonna save real quick. And now we take on Misty. Well, my current policy is to do the same thing, but with grass types, so, uh, you're fucked. Oh, fuck off. I guess it's gotta waste turns until it decides to not be disabled anymore. Yeah, we're disabled, but we can't get preferential parking. Fine, be that way. You only delay the inevitable. Well, that was easy. No surprises there. And I'm pretty sure none of my Pokémon can learn Bubble Beam, but just double-check it anyway. Nope. But here's what we can do. We, hit, we can hit Start, and it deposits it in the PC! Isn't technology amazing? Now, I'm probably gonna sort that later. I tend to sort my, my TMs by number. But first, we're gonna heal up, because we have another important battle up ahead of us. Battle with our rival. Before we do that, I want to show you something. Nope. Around here. So first we go to the Pokemon Mart. Hey, remember the TM Pirate? Yeah, this guy sells you Bide. I think it's the only one he sells in this city. Do I want to buy anything more? Hmm. I could buy a couple of Burn Heels. Maybe some more Pokeballs. Yeah, we're gonna do that. Okay, so now, we run up here, to go back here. And around here, there is a rare candy hidden. I just need to find it. At least I think there is. I know in vanilla there is. And of course, you can't just spin in place in Gen 1, so that makes searching much more tedious. Nope, 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 nope. There it is! And we can talk to this guy, and this is how we get the old rod. 
So yeah, we get it a little earlier in this hack. So I caught a couple of water types with the old rod, and this fills up the PC box. And we're gonna show you how these change how it's changed. You press hide, and it won't ask you to, to save before changing a PC box ever again. Again, isn't technology amazing? Oh, and you can find Squirtle to the west of Cerulean City if you want one. They're very, very stubborn, though. Just a word of warning. Now we're gonna put those Pokémon away that we just caught. But we're gonna pick out a different one. Pidgeotto. We're not gonna use it for battle, though. I'm gonna use it to get another Pokémon added to the Pokédex. Because... An in-game trade... I think it's this guy. Yep, you can get a seal! For Pidgeotto, and you can catch Pidgeotto to the west of Cerulean City, or obviously you can evolve Pidgey pretty easily. Again, this is purely just to get the Pokedex data. Yeah, back in the day, you had to have a physical connection between your systems to trade. And it could fail at any time. So, yeah. Compared to back then, once again, I reiterate myself, isn't technology amazing? And it's named Slappy, which is cute. Okay, so next stop, Nugget Bridge, and another battle with this asshole. Literally, that's his name. Oh yeah, Focus Energy actually works properly in this hack, so yeah. I'm not sure what the hell he's doing. It could just be good AI. Or wait, no. I think he was using I I think he was using Bide too. Whatever. In any case, I know I've maxed out attack power, so time for Metapod to completely own this son of a bitch. You just got sold by a fucking Metapod, asshole! Wow! <laughs> Seriously, you lost to a fucking Metapod! Shame on you! Yeah, that's cool. Uh huh, sure. Well, I'm pretty sure I'll be the one smelling you. Anyways, let's go back and heal. Going back north to Nugget Bridge. Reflect. Hmm. Now, if I recall correctly, now, in regular Gen 1, Reflect lasts through the entire battle. That's tempting. That's very tempting. I don't know if that's still the case in this hack, but, you know what? Yeah, fuck it. I know Mega Drain only has 10 power points, but fuck it. Let's do it. Just for now. That'd be useful for support. Go to sleep. How many 
power points do I have left? Probably not a lot. Two. Come on! Go to sleep! Okay, well, we're just gonna have to wait for this to do its thing. And time to smash. You tell me. Anyways, let's go back and heal. I know it may annoy you if I'm constantly jumping back to the Pokemon Center, but I'm close enough, and anyways, the Pocket Abra makes it stupidly fast, so why not? Oh yeah, Krabby and Kingler are water and ground type. In this hack. So, don't use electric moves on them. It won't end well. Nope. Unless you count being tired of having weak opponents. Go the fuck to sleep! Oh yeah, and Ponita and Rapidash are fire and normal type, which, well, it gives them immunity go to ghost attacks, I guess. Because, oh yeah, there are some more ghost type attacks than just Lick and Nightshade in this hack. Barrage actually becomes, I think it hits twice now, and it's ghost type, but in practice, it's basically Shadow Ball. Alright, well. Mm hmm. Sure, where do I sign? Bruh, dude. Dude, I told you I wanted to join. What's your problem? <sighs> Once again, some people just can't take yes for an answer. Oh well. If he's this stupid, I don't want to associate with him anyway. Oh yeah, I think you're immune to Leech Seed because you're Grass-type. No, you're not evolving! Eh, fuck off, loser. And now that we do have a nugget, we're actually going to buy one by TM, because that actually could be useful on one Pokemon we'll be able to get later. Actually, no, it might be useful to get on a couple of Pokemon, so give me a second, let's go get another one. Because we're going to be able to get at least one other Pokemon we'll be able to use in our run in this episode.
Yeah, this particular trainer, by the way, this is one of the trainers you can use to execute the Mew Glitch. But again, that won't be necessary in this hack. We can get Mew, quote-unquote, legitimately. on you. Might as well, just hoarding these things and not using them. Eh, might as well catch it. That's not the Pokemon I was talking about, though. We're gonna go back and heal real quick. Oh, yeah, so I just knocked out a, a Krabby, and, uh, Stag Snag, that's an electric attack. So, uh, yeah. I'm gonna keep Poison Powder and Leech Seed, because then I can use that for attritional attacks, basically. Now we're up here, we can get ourselves M45, which is... Thunder Wave. That might come in handy later. I'll explain why. But let's see. Can't. Nope, none of the Pokemon learn it. No surprises there. That patch of grass is where we need to go. Fur. Actually, no, we're not going to battle you yet. Yep, this is what we're after Bell Sprout. Now, the Victory Bell line is interesting in this hack because. Victory Bell is not a Grass and Poison type. It's a Grass and Dragon type. So, yeah, I definitely want this. And now... Well, let's go back to Pokemon Center and heal up the newest member of my team, shall we? Oh, there's a rare Pokemon. Yeah, on the route where Nugget Bridge is, you can find Lickitung, which I think in vanilla, you can only get by trading for it. This is a very rare Pokemon. Okay, let's just... There we go. Yep, now we got it. So, I... F well, forgot to record this bit while I was doing a little bit of off-screen level grinding, but yeah, I evolved Bellsprout into Weeping Bell. And now knows Acid, Bide, because Acid is poison and poison is physical. This doesn't implement the physical special split. Um, then Vine Whip and Sleep Powder. And we're just going to make our way over here. There are some more Pokemon we can catch on this route, like Pinsir, actually, is one of them. But we're going to do that off camera. There's nothing else on this route that I can actually use on my team. And this is the other trainer that you need to execute the Mew Glitch in vanilla. So, let me explain how it works. You know that first trainer in the grass? If you stop in the, the tile directly above where, you, where he would see you and use teleport, then what happens is he'll spot you, but then you'll teleport away. You'll go back to the Pokemon Center and your menu won't work. You go over here, and you battle this specific youngster. And then after that, you teleport back. Then you walk north to Nugget Bridge. And then after that, your, men your menu will open automatically. And as soon as you leave the menu, that's when Mew appears at level 8. That is the easiest and earliest way to get Mew in the Generation 1 games.
It has to do with something called arbitrary code execution. It's very... Generation 1 is very, very weirdly programmed, and part of it is just... They only had somewhat space on these cartridges, so they had to take shortcuts to make it work. And this sometimes had unintended consequences. Alright, I think you've lost enough health. We're gonna swap you out. We're gonna switch and execute again. Okay, we're actually gonna waste some reflect power points just to save power points from Mega Drain. And because we brought him down here, we can go up there and get another item. Alright, and this gives us TM30, which is... Mega Drain. Eh. Might teach that to something. We'll see. Uh, we're out of power points for you, so we're gonna actually slip in with an Ivasaur now. Dag, dag! It's electric type. And it has more power points than Vine Whip, which is useful. Come on! Fine, be that way. Sure you're not, sweetie. Okay, so now, of course, we arrive at Bill's house. And we find him in a state not unlike Seth Brundle in The Fly. Only this, well... <laughs> The teleporter works a lot better here than it did in The Fly. Now, interesting thing about these teleporters, there's another ROM hack that's for Fire Red called Fire Red Throwback. These teleporters are how you evolve Pokémon that need trades to evolve, in the hack. More you know. Okay, so... Yep. So now we're gonna go back over here. We're not gonna teleport back because there's another item we can get. TM31, which is... Firewall. This was actually a cut move from the beta, and nowadays, the closest equivalent to it is Will-O-Wisp. So, now we're going to teleport back. Okay, we're going to do just one more thing before we wrap this up. This house has been robbed. We talked to this asshole here. Might be that way. By the way, Dig is much stronger in this generation. Generation 1 is the equivalent of Earthquake, just takes two turns. But also, you can enter this house here. The Grunt didn't go very far! This is him. Same guy. Now, what is he so insistent on keeping hidden from you? Terra Enigma. HA! Yep. That happens a lot in that game. Anyways, I think we're done for this time. If you like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, check out my Rumble page, and I'll catch you all next time.